What if I told you that the man with underlings like Edward Newgate, Kaido, Charlotte Linlin, Captain John, and many others is still alive and well? You wouldn't believe me, right? I think it's about time you did because with the way the story is heading, this scenario seems more and more likely each chapter. But before we go in depth, let us discuss the currently introduced clone technology because I think Rox cloned himself. Stussy being confirmed as a clone brought clarity to many questions I have had for a while now. Like why is Vegapunk being hunted by the world government? It has become completely obvious to me that they fear this technology and they seek total monopoly without having to rely on Vegapunk. Just think what the world government can do with that tech they could literally clone every king and noble. The kings of the One Piece world are against the world government based on their morality and principles, but they do not dare to defy them in the open. So even though they will obey any order from them, if the order is something absurd or evil, they won't comply, which is why cloning them is in the government's best interest. Clone leaders will be perfect puppet rulers, and they will grant the world government absolute control. This explains why they want to get rid of Vegapunk. He has already shown that he has some freedom in the decision-making unlike others that work for them. And with his goal being to provide helpful tech to the entire world, I don't see the government's desire to control aligning with his goals. This also explains why one of the five elders is personally making his move. They can't risk Vegapunk escaping and the potential loss of this technology. It's just so important to them that Vegapunk loses his life. Kizaru bringing along a fleet and one of the five elders can also be seen as them putting some respect on Luffy's name. They have a lot of info about Luffy's fifth gear so they don't plan underestimating him. Ever since he first started his pirate journey they underestimated Luffy. And as you all know things didn't work out well for those who did. These latest chapters have also given closure on the self-proclaimed Whitebeard Jr. also known as Edward Weevil. I find his mother's claims to be partially correct, as I will explain right now. I will cut straight to the point here. I think Weevil is a clone and that's for several reasons. The first reason would be his mother's conversation with Marco. She literally told him to ask Vegapunk. I mean, it's not like Vegapunk has this weird kink. Of spying on Whitebeard's sex life, the most logical explanation would be that he cloned him. Weevil did not appear until Whitebeard died, which also convinces me of this. They could only gather his DNA after he died. It's not like someone could just walk to a Yonko and ask him for some body matter. If he truly was his son, I wouldn't see a reason why he wouldn't try and meet Whitebeard. I am aware that One Piece fathers are quick to buy milk, but Pops is literally one of the few exceptions. The guy adopted so many children he was literally called Daddy. As many times as I will be this Valentine's Day, the only likely scenario is that Vegapunk cloned Weevil. And as for why he did that I believe is because of a mutual agreement. She decided to give Vegapunk her genes to clone Stussy in exchange for Vegapunk owning her a favor. He couldn't just ask anyone after all. Such technology is supposed to be a secret. And who best to ask for Sun Jeans than a former Rocks member whose existence the world government is most likely trying to hide? From what we have seen so far, she doesn't look like the best person to grant favors to but Vegapunk is sort of a rushed guy. Well anyways I hope this answered some of your questions, now onto the main topic. The reason why I think Rox is still alive is because his disappearance reminds me one of those moments where it's too good to be true. I mean, let me understand this correctly. So a notorious pirate stronger than Roger and with the most dangerous crew in history simply disappeared one day with a huge island. Does this make any sense to you? I certainly find it bizarre and weird. I find him being cloned much more believable. Vegapunk might have found clues about clone tech after investigating the area of God Valley. But even if he didn't clone himself, the chances of the world government cloning him are not low. Vegapunk and Imsama are as ancient as Toki, so I wouldn't put it past them to know some dark secrets about this world. Rox was a man with ambitions so big that he wanted to rule the world. History has taught us such men are not easy to be put down. The information we have gotten in these latest chapters has opened the door for many legendary characters of the past to appear in the story. Honestly, I am very excited about it and wish to hear your thoughts as well. So kindly hit the like button, subscribe, and leave us a comment. I always find the points you guys make highly enjoyable.